Are you ready to take your controller skills to the next level and dominate your competition? Look no further. This video is packed with seven expert tips that will elevate your gameplay and help you become an absolute beast on the controller. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or a newcomer on the sticks, these tips are sure to help you reach your full potential to become the best controller player you can be. So get ready to level up your skills and leave your opponents in the dust. If you're serious about becoming an insane controller player, the first step is to use either a controller with paddles or to play with a claw grip. Playing with one of these allows you to either bind the face buttons of your controller to a paddle or to press the face buttons with claw, meaning you never have to take your thumb off of the right stick, giving you control over everything, no matter what you're doing. For example, if you don't play with claw or paddles and you get into high intensity situations such as build battles where you constantly have to jump, build, switch mode, and edit. Every time you do one of these actions, you have to take your thumb off of the right stick to press one of the face buttons on your controller, meaning you don't always have full control and it takes more time to press, which could cost you the fight. Now, if you do decide to switch to a controller with paddles or to play claw, it's gonna be tough in the beginning and you might wanna give up, but it's worth it to stick it out and get better on them. When you first start out, just practice free building and editing in your own island. Once you feel comfortable with building and editing, hop into some real games to take yourself out of your comfort zone and put you in some real in-game scenarios, which will help you get used to your new binds. Having a sensitivity that you're comfortable with is a huge part in becoming an insane controller player. A bad habit that you may have is changing your sensitivity way too often. Now you may think this is helping you, but in reality, every time you change your sensitivity, you're throwing away all of the muscle memory you had and you're starting fresh. The best thing to do is to choose a sensitivity you feel comfortable on and stick to it, no matter what. Over time, you'll build up a ton of muscle memory on that sensitivity and your building and editing accuracy, as well as your aim will get much better. Now, how do you find the perfect sensitivity for yourself? Take a friend and go into your own creative island. Once you're there, have them stand around four to five boxes away and get them to run around you. While doing this, you're going to want to track them without aiming down sights. If you're constantly behind them, then you're going to want to raise your sensitivity up a bit until it's much easier to track them. On the other hand, if you're constantly over tracking them, try turning your sensitivity down a bit until you're not over tracking anymore. You can do the same test for your ADS multipliers as well and adjust them the same way. When it comes to build and edit multipliers, you can test these out by just free building in your own island. Most controller pro players are in the range of 1.6 to 2.2 build edit multipliers because it's the easiest to control. Anything above or below that range starts to get harder to control and it messes up your crosshair placement while building and editing. While free building, if you notice you're constantly making wide edits by accident or over flicking, try decreasing your multipliers a bit until they feel more comfortable to you. Not having a solid warm-up routine could be holding you back from being the insane controller player you know you can be. All of the top controller pros like Mero, Day, Reet, and Cam have many things in common. One of those being that they all have a warm-up routine that they use when they get on every day to prepare them to play. A good warm-up routine typically lasts around 30 to 40 minutes and focuses on two parts, aim and mechanics. Some great ways to warm up your mechanics are through edit courses, Raiders Peace Control Map, 1v1 Build Fights, and Free Building in your own island. After you get your mechanics warmed up, it's time to warm up your aim. Great aim in Fortnite is arguably the most important skill to have, so it's very important that your aim's warmed up before you hop into games. To warm up your aim, try Raiders Aim Training Map or 1v1 Aim Duels. Both of these maps are great to warm up long slash short range tracking and shotgun aim. You don't need to use every one of these maps, so choose a few that work for you and toss them into your warm up routine to become a demon on the sticks. Understanding new metas every season is crucial in becoming an insane controller player. The meta refers to the best strategies and skills used in the game to be at the top level. This includes knowing the best new guns, heals, and knowing what's the best loadout for the season. This season brought a ton of new items such as the Havoc Shotgun, the Kinetic Blade, and ODM gear. Also, new best in-slot healing items such as the Legendary Slurp Juice, which is arguably the best heal item Fortnite has ever added. For movement, the Kinetic Blade and ODM gear are great, but what a lot of people don't know is how good ODM gear can be for fighting. It has an attack option that launches through any build and can hit your opponent for up to 70 damage per hit. When it comes to the best controller loadout this season, you're going to definitely want to have ODM gear in there. Shotgun wise, the Havoc shotgun is the only viable option. The combat shotgun does little to no damage as well as the Maven auto shotgun. When it comes to your secondary weapon, there are a few good options. 
The strongest secondary this season is the Mythic Pulse Rifle. This is one of the most overpowered guns they've ever added, but there's only enough for one team per game. Every game, an island spawns after the third storm circle. With this item comes a flag that you need to capture, and it drops the Mythic Pulse Rifle and Slurp Juices. If you can get this, then definitely keep it in your loadout. But more practically, you're gonna want either a Twin Mag SMG or a high rarity pistol. The Twin Mags hit for a ton of damage and even has some range to it. The pistol's also great with a fast reload and high damage. For the last spot in your loadout, you're gonna want some minis, splashes, or big pots. Have a loadout like this every game to ensure you have the advantage in every fight you take. Before we get into the next way to improve your game, if you want to become an even better player, you can access all of our courses and bootcamp content for just $7.99. If personalized coaching is more your speed, you'll get 10% off any session with any of our pros. To reach your full potential as a controller player in Fortnite, you're going to need to step out of your comfort zone and try things that you've never tried before or try things that you struggle with. For example, if you're someone who only plays pubs, start playing some arena games to start playing against better competition. It may not go so well at first, but over time, it will make you a better player. If you're someone who tends to hide until the end game and you don't get too many kills, step out of your comfort zone and start pushing people and going for high kill wins. You may struggle at first, but it's for the greater good. You need to push yourself outside of your comfort zone to reach your full potential. VOD reviewing, otherwise known as rewatching gameplay, is a huge part in growing your skills as a Fortnite player. The reason why VOD reviewing your own gameplay helps you is because you're able to look back and see your own mistakes that you may not even know you're making. This allows you to fix these mistakes and to grow as a player. I recommend watching a game that didn't go so well, so you're able to see where something went wrong. For example, if you die mid-game, you may not have farmed enough mats early, made a bad rotation, or just didn't loot off spawn fast enough. Along with watching your own gameplay to notice mistakes you made, VOD reviewing pro controller players is also a great thing to do. This is because you can see habits that they have or specific things that they do that you can add to your own game. For example, if you struggle with getting a ton of kills, VOD review reads gameplay and see what he does to get high kill games. Pick up on things like his rotations to find players, the way he fights with right hand peaks, or even disengaging fights that he's losing. While you watch these players, ask yourself what they did in that situation that helped them, and ask yourself what you would have done differently there. Once you get put into these situations in-game that you've VOD reviewed, you'll know exactly what to do and you'll be able to make a better decision. The last tip on how to become an insane controller player is a simple one. You need to train. You need to train things like crosshair placement, piece control, mechanics, and aim. The best way to practice these types of skills in Fortnite is through creative. Practicing these skills through creative allows you to have infinite amounts of repetitions without the stress of losing a game. And if you mess up, the only person who'll see it is you. So don't be afraid to try new things. A great way to practice piece control and mechanics is through Raider's piece control map. This map allows you to go through 25 different in game scenarios where you have to piece control your opponent and secure the elimination. While going through these scenarios, work on consistency in your builds and edits before you work on going fast. The best way to train your aim is with the same maps you use to warm up your aim, which is Raider's aim training map and 1v1 aim duels. The aim training map has a ton of different scenarios you can go through such as shotgun flicks, close range shotgun, long range and mid range tracking, and more. While you're in this map, focus on whatever you know that you struggle with. When it comes to to 1v1 aim duels, these are a great way to work on close range SMG tracking. As a controller player, being in a box with your SMG should be a pretty familiar situation. With this 1v1 aim duel map, you can set your HP from 1000 to 5000 and hop into a head to head scenario where it's just you and your opponent. Focus on controlling your crosshair and always keeping it towards your opponent's head. Train with these maps every day and you're on your way to becoming an insane controller player.